wonder what's going on when you blow a bubble? Basically, inside of a bubble, you have these soap or detergent molecules. These molecules have a hydrophobic part, so a part that doesn't want to hang out with water, or that at least water doesn't want to hang out with it, and a hydrophilic part, so a part that water loves to hang out with. When you put these soap molecules in the presence of water, like in one of these mixtures, well, now those molecules are going to have to arrange themselves so that their hydrophobic parts, those water avoided parts, are going to avoid the water, such as reaching towards the air, and those hydrophilic parts, those water love parts, are going to hang out with the water. What happens is that this makes it so that you form a film. And in this film, you have basically the two layers of soap with a layer of water in between. And so the soap molecules have those hydrophobic parts, their tails sticking out towards the air, and their hydrophilic parts, those, their heads, are hanging out with the water in this thin layer in between. Now what happens when you blow into them? Now you're introducing air. Now normally if you were just to blow into a layer of water, well first off it'd be hard to form a layer of water, but even if you could, it wouldn't expand to form the bubble. But we're able to get these bubbles with the soap film because these soaps act as surfactants or surface acting agents, meaning that they lower surface tension. So the reason why we can't blow a bubble with pure water is that the water molecules are really sticky to one another because they have something called polarity, where basically that our hydrogen part soap the Mickey ears on those water molecules, they like to hang out with the, with the Mickey head, um, the oxygen molecules, because they're oppositely partly charged. And more on this in another post. But basically, water molecules stick to one another. And so they're sticking to one another, they're not going to want to expand and let air in. But when you add a surfactant, when you add like a soap or detergent, those molecules are kind of going to break up the water's network, lower that surface tension, and make it so that these films of water are able to expand when you blow air in. So when you blow air in, what's happening basically is you still have that film, but now it has to, accom uh, it has to accommodate water air in, between, in the middle. And so the way that it does this is by expanding this film, but having it so that those tails are still going to be interfacing with the air on the inside and on the air with the outside. Because remember, you have those two layers and then you have the film of water in between. Now this film is going to be different thicknesses and different places and things like this. And where this comes into play is the reason why you see different colors in different places of your bubbles and different places of these films. Basically, light is made up of waves of different energy particles called photons, and each color of the rainbow has its own photon associated with it, with its own unique energy, and that makes it look like a unique color. So you have all these wavelengths, and together you get, if you put them all together, you get white light. And so when you have light coming through and it hits an object, well now some things can happen. Some of the light can get absorbed or the light can get deflected off. It can get bounced off. What happens when the light makes the film is that now it has two layers to bounce off of. It has the layer of the soap molecules in the, in the top and then it has that layer on the bottom. And what's going to happen is that because it's kind of hitting these two different places, it's going to start bouncing off at different places. And then some of those bounced off waves are going to interact with one another and they're going to cancel each other out through this thing called wave interference. This is going to hide some of the colors of the rainbow and so you're going to see colors. But you're going to see different colors in different places because you're going to have th th thicknesses of the bubble in different places. Now, the reason why the bubble is like circular is because what's happening is those trapped gas molecules inside of the bubble, they're going to be trying to escape. But, and those molecules on the, in the film are going to be trying to stick together. And so they're going to be minimizing their surface area. And then like, because those water molecules, they still really don't want to hang out. They don't want to expand too much because they like one another. Um, so they're going to be trying to clench together and stay as small as possible in terms of their surface area. But then um, the air is going to be trying to push out. And so the way that this is going to result in is going to be this bubble form, this circular form of a bubble. And then eventually the bubble's going to pop. So, hope that helps you understand bubble science, and happy first birthday, Wes. Hopefully when you're older, you'll appreciate the science behind these bubbles.